Welcome to NTN Nightly. I am Janelle Novel. This edition Stop Stories. St. Lucia is set to welcome its first cruise ship since the onset of the COVID-19 pandemic. The government of St. Lucia amends the COVID-19 prevention and control regulations. And the Department of Environmental Health continues sensitization efforts on the dangers posed by vectors. St. Lucia will welcome Celebrity Millennium to podcast trees on Tuesday, 29th June 2021, setting the tone for the gradual reintroduction of cruise tourism to the island since the halt due to the COVID-19 pandemic. Celebrity Millennium will call into port around 7.30 a.m. with an anticipated 400 passenger capacity. The announcement was made on Friday morning by government officials. The scheduled call into St. Lucia bodes well for business linkages and signals the reinstatement of revenue for well over 1,000 cruise dependent income earners. With the health and safety of St. Lucians remaining of paramount importance, there continues to be engagement with all stakeholders, including simulation exercises, to continuously reevaluate the island's capacity to safely execute cruise tourism and guard the response during the various stages of reintroduction. Efforts to ensure the safe re-establishment of cruise calls to podcast trees were incessant, with regular meetings with the cruise lines, handling agencies, and the locally established cruise committee. The government of St. Lucia has approved amendments to the COVID-19 prevention and control regulations, effective Friday 25 June 2021 until Tuesday 31 August 2021. The decisions by the Cabinet of Ministers have been taken following consultation with the Command Centre and based on data related to the number of active COVID-19 cases in St. Lucia. The Government of St. Lucia continues to encourage all St. Lucians to get vaccinated and to follow the protocols in order to further decrease the spread of COVID-19. The Government of St. Lucia is mindful of the sectors impacted by COVID-19 and anticipates that the latest measures will assist the transportation, food and beverage and event sector, as well as linkage industries. The latest measures are as follows. The curfew is adjusted to 11 p.m. to 4 a.m. daily. Faith-based organizations may hold special religious rites including weddings, baptisms and funerals, with a maximum of 100 persons in attendance. Graduations and school leaving ceremonies are permitted based on square footage of the building and in keeping with all established COVID-19 protocols. Social events with up to 150 fully vaccinated persons are permitted after authorization through the Ministry of Health and Wellness and the Commissioner of Police. A public omnibus operator is permitted to carry up to three passengers per row. A person with a valid liquor license under the Liquor License Act Cap 13.17 that offers for sale or disposes of intoxicating liquor only shall be permitted to operate from 8 a.m. to 10 p.m. daily. Returning nationals and visitors with a negative PCR test and who are fully vaccinated will not require quarantine. Random testing will be done at all arrival points. Notwithstanding, the CMO retains the power to place visitors in quarantine in order to protect public health. The government is also pleased to announce the resumption of inter-island ferry services Martinique to St. Lucia with effect from the 1st of July 2021. The public is further advised that all public health measures such as mandatory mask wearing in public social distancing, washing and sanitizing of hands remain in place. As the government continues to strengthen the public health system, it urges the public to act responsibly and ask for the full cooperation in the safe implementation of the new measures in place. Persons are urged and encouraged to take advantage of the vaccination drive to protect themselves, their family and the wider society. Meanwhile, the Pan American Health Organization, PAHO, is requesting expedite action of the G7 nations promised to deliver 1 billion COVID-19 vaccine doses to low-income nations. There have been over 1.1 million new cases registered in our part of the world and 31,000 new deaths in the past week. Four out of the five countries with the highest weekly death count continue to be in the Americas. 
According to PAHO, while new cases and hospitalizations are slowing in the United States and Canada, there has been a general infection increase in Central and South America. In the Caribbean, Cuba and the Dominican Republic continue to drive the newest cases in the region, while Trinidad and Tobago is reporting high death rates. In a three-day summit over the weekend, the group of seven nations, that is the most advanced economies of the world, determined that they wanted to end the pandemic next year. This thrust includes making 1 billion doses of COVID-19 vaccines accessible to low-income nations. PAHO Director Dr. Carissa Etienne says vulnerable nations in our part of the world need the help that has been pledged by the G7. This promise brings fresh confidence that we will overcome the supply barriers that have prevented many nations and territories in our region from getting the doses that they need to protect their populations. Today, less than one in 10 people in Latin America and the Caribbean have been fully vaccinated against COVID. Yet, we are a region of more than 600 million people where cases are mounting, hospitals are full, and variants are rapidly circulating. So while vaccines are needed everywhere, we hope that the G7 nations will prioritize doses for countries at greatest risk especially those in Latin America that have not yet had access to enough vaccines to even protect the most vulnerable. These doses cannot come soon enough. So we urge G7 countries not to delay their donations. We need the vaccines now. Dr. Etienne says until there is adequate access to vaccines, Countries in the Americas need to tighten public health measures in cases of high transmission rates. We urge countries to tighten public health measures in places with high transmission. This is the most effective way to bring cases down until we have enough vaccines for everyone. St. Lucia's national policy for fisheries has been revised to maximize implementation of its nine priority areas by engaging more stakeholders to the sector. Chief Fisheries Officer Sarita Williams-Peter says the revised document expands beyond the ecosystem focus to other elements of the sector, including post-harvest matters in fisheries and aquaculture, seamoss production logistics, and a wider scope on the climate change response. This, she says, will address the sector's issues more comprehensively as opposed to the previous limited policy. It did not take into account sort of the triple bottom line of sustainable development, which includes the ecological, the social and the economic considerations in any sector. And so we've tried to move away from only focusing on the resource and the ecosystem, but recognizing that the fishery sector is an entire value chain, and we need to consider everyone in the value chain, not only fishers. So I'm hoping that not only fishers are glued here mm -hmm. today, but um, processors, all individuals who have a stake or have an interest in the fishery sector or depend on fish as a livelihood would be um, geared up and listening to about the policy and, and know how to move forward. The revised policy will foster a more collaborative approach among stakeholders to improve the welfare of all parties in the fisheries value chain. In 2018, when we began, we began the consultation process for this new policy, we tried to broaden our scope of stakeholders involved. The, the previous one, um, we focused more on the fisher folk, the fishers, those who go out to sea, the boat owners, crew, etc. Cooperative members, etc. But then we realized that hey, if we want a sector to develop the full value chain and to bring in the social and economic considerations, we needed to bring in more sector players. We mm -hmm. needed to recognize that we had to bring in gender. We brought the, the gender yes. people, we brought in social transformation, we brought in Export St. Lucia, all those major players, mm -hmm. um, commerce, all of those industry stakeholders to come in and really understand what the fishery sector needed and to, to help um, integrate that into their portfolios as well.
Williams Peter explained that the direction of the policy may not have immediate payoffs for parties in the fisheries chain, but will over time improve efficiency in the industry. The average fisher would say, "Where's the money in my pocket?" Right. That's that's just going bottom to be the bust. That's going to be the bottom line. Mm -hmm. um, the reality is that the work that we do, it takes time. Change paradigm shifts take time to to realize improvements. So, for example. When um, the Department of Fisheries introduced the first fad in St. Lucia, mm -hmm. fishers went out, grabbed it, and brought it right back to shore. They didn't understand what it was. They didn't understand the benefit. They thought, well, what is this thing in the water? Mm -hmm. Now you have fishers say, but we need fads. Fishers are building their own fads. People are advocating for fads because they see the importance. Mm -hmm. The bottom line is, is that we're trying to create an environment where fishers can eventually benefit from. So you may not see a direct benefit and more money in your pocket tomorrow, but it is creating an environment where you can now thrive better. You can, mm. you can see other opportunities you can move. The revised national policy for the fisheries sector takes effect for the period 2020 to 2030. The Department of Environmental Health continues sensitization efforts on the dangers posed by vectors to a person's health and quality of life. The vector control team has been walking the talk, actively identifying and destroying potential vector breeding sites, thus keeping the public safe and healthy. Hamadi Ma tells us more. The Ministry of Health and Wellness is continuing its awareness drive on the dangers posed by vectors to a person's health and quality of life. The push to disseminate this pertinent information began during Vector Awareness Week, which coincided with the commencement of the rainy season. The Department of Environmental Health is undertaking vector management in the home and community. Glenda Etienne Sipal is an environmental health officer in the Ministry of Health and Wellness. How do we do it? With an integrated vector management strategy, which takes a team of environmental health officers, vector control inspectors, field technicians and other stakeholders, but most importantly, you. Our inspectors are on the front lines in the battle to curb the vector population, from commercial properties and open lots to residential neighborhoods. One vector of concern to the Ministry of Health and Wellness is the Aedes aegypti mosquito, which spreads dengue fever, chikungunya, and the Zika virus. One female mosquito can produce about 300 eggs in its lifetime. For this reason, the environmental health team identifies and destroys all potential vector breeding sites. Our mosquito management approach involves tackling mosquitoes at different stages of the life cycle. We collect mosquito egg and larval samples for study, like testing to determine if mosquitoes are developing resistance to the chemicals that we use. We treat larvae infested standing water with a naturally occurring microorganism found in soil as a larvicide and use aerosol mist as part of our fogging operations to target the adult stage of the mosquito, which is always the last resort. Other vectors, such as rats, are also targeted by the Department of Environmental Health. A female rat can produce 56 offspring in her lifetime. Rats can also spread leptospirosis. The Environmental Health Officer says it is important to know the species of rats that may be occupying a person's home in order to control this vector. This can be determined through their characteristics and behaviors. Non-chemical approaches like reducing or eliminating food, water and shelter can rid your homes from rats and mice. Of course, our team cannot be everywhere at once and mosquitoes will breed and emerge and go looking for a blood meal. Rats will come in search of food and hence spread diseases along the way. We depend on you, the public, to prevent mosquitoes from breeding in your yard. Simple improvements to your home can play a substantial role to reduce vectors such as screening windows and doors, proper garbage disposal techniques, and rat proofing your home. The Department of Environmental Health encourages members of the public to play an active role in reducing vector breeding sites by identifying and removing standing water in and around the home. This can also be done by using empty containers for kitchen or backyard gardening and a proper disposal of decomposing waste which can also be used for composting as an alternative to fertilizer. From the Government Information Service, I'm Hermity Mark reporting. 
The Youth Ambassador Program since its inception some 20 years ago has contributed to increased youth knowledge and awareness of CARICOM issues and priorities. The program has also raised the profile of young people at the national and regional levels and assisted in integrating the views and perspectives of young people from across the region into national, regional and international policy and programs. Mary Welfred is the Director of Youth in the Ministry of Youth Development and Sports. Our CARICOM Youth Ambassadors, we usually have two, one male and one female. Um, primarily, they are to educate young people on regional issues that, um, uh, that affect them. Um, they, are to, they are to advocate on the rights of young people, be that, that advocacy, um, be that advocate in chief for the things that, um, that pertain to young people. Um, as well, they, they strive to integrate young people in um, regional or sub-regional development and also they, they promote regional integration. Um, so these young people, the, the CARICOM Youth Ambassadors are really important in terms of education, in terms of advocacy, integration and also promotion. And their target group um, their, ta their target group is young people and so with the programs and activities they would initiate it would seek to ensure that regional integration is promoted and that the rights of young people are always advocated for on that level. 20-year-old Jakub Nesta of Babano is St. Lucia's CARICOM Youth Ambassador for 2020. Nesta disclosed that becoming a CARICOM Youth Ambassador has always been one of his goals and he was elated when he got the opportunity. Highlighting his early influences, he explained why he got involved in youth work. My aunt Tecla de Turville, my mom Ingrid Nesta and my dad Peter J. Baptiste were my main pillars, especially my grandmom. But um, for me, it really all started when I joined Cassius Central Youth and Sports Council, which I currently am the second vice president. And I'm also on the Babono Youth Development Committee as well. The other thing as well is that I've been very vocal in um, youth marginalization, which really focuses on youth who tend to feel that they're not represented at forums. So you have people with disabilities, LGBTQI persons, grassroots persons, those basic things. And really and truly coming from that background, you really need to have an understanding as well. And um, when being a youth worker, I try my best to not judge because that is basically the key principle for me is really understanding everyone's mindset and concept and really what have you in this sort of position in life. Rejan Montut of Grozile got involved in youth work at the age of 14. Her selection as a CARICOM Youth Ambassador came after several applications. However, she was not discouraged and her persistence paid off. Volunteerism is her passion and has provided her with many opportunities. Montut, sharing words of advice, explained that while selfless acts may not offer any direct gains, it can be very beneficial. Youth development, community work, volunteerism um, is a selfless act. You do it because of the passion, you do it because you love it. Um, it can very much benefit you in terms of your professional development, a lot of the skills that I have now, and even the, for my current, because I don't work full-time in volunteerism, youth development work, and that sort of thing, but I work in IT um, at the Court of Appeal, and I could remember clearly some of the things that I was able to put on my CV that I still have on my CV started, I developed those skills in youth development work. So PR, marketing, um, secretarial work, administrative work, planning, event planning, project management, um, leadership, communication, organization, all of these skills were skills that I developed as a result of being part of the youth movement. So there is that indirect feel that just being part and parcel of any initiative can bring to you as a young person. Um, and secondly, I would just say that you may not see the benefits directly. So it's not like 
you come into it and you get paid or you come into it and you will get a direct benefit but there are long-term things you get to network with persons and your network is your net worth so a lot of the people a lot of the opportunities that I have received in life I could trace it back to that one day deciding to volunteer at that initiative the CARICOM Youth Ambassador Program was launched in St. Lucia in 1993 by the heads of government to mark the 20th anniversary of CARICOM and was formally instituted in 1994. This is NTN Nightly. Up next, Primus Hutchinson with the NTN Novella for you all. Climat la terre a changé. Exa a affecté nous toutes. Cyclone qui a venu plus mauvais. Gros l'eau et l'air a pris de l'eau. Car des tuiles animaux et plants. Quand la mer a venu plus chaud. Et quand tu es place qui se pressent dans la gravité. La mer chaud a aussi changé de manière se pressent. Car il était d'un côté et allé à l'autre côté. Cette liste a contribué en petit zingas en l'espace. Quand un petit pays nous a essayé de faire tout ça nous a fait pour assurer qu'il nous baisse à ce quantité de gaz nous a servi pour empêcher la terre de venir plus chaud. Et faut pour baisser à ce quantité de gaz nous a servi, c'est mitigation. Le climat a changé. Il a changé depuis que nous tout au le monde la terre, car le gaz, l'huile et le charbon. Et ça, quand on cause la terre, il a changé plus chaud. Ça, nous ne pouvons faire tout le monde, c'est pour adapter. Nous faisons tout ça nous a fait pour préparer et répondre pour ces conséquences négatives à la cause du changement du climat. Nous tous, ça fait quelque chose. Par exemple, nous n'y pouvons assurer qui nous protéger tout ça nous a planté. C'est vie fumier qui est naturel. Bâtir caïnou pour abattre des mange en temps cyclone et godlo. Construire canal pour l'eau courir bien quand il faut. Et assurer qui canal là par les ordi. Faire tout ça qui est possible pour vivre en temps changement climat ça. Trouver plus d'informations à ce plan d'adaptation national gouvernement et des marches ou même ça prend pour protéger corps et tout notre set les siens. Welcome back. We join Primus Hutchinson for the NTN Nouvelle Creole. Monsieur le général, Monsieur, Madame, département qui nous responsabilité pour les formations à gouvernement de la CGIS, à ce même télévision nationale via NTN, Capositor Nouvelle à Creole. Capositor Primus Hutchinson. Gouvernement de la CGIS a approuvé le changement des règlements pour contrôler et la protection de la maladie corona, commencé vendredi le 25 en mois de juin pour le 31 en mois d'août 2021. Le même cabinet de gouvernement prend une décision ça là, après consultation et puis ça qui a commandé toute opération de la maladie corona et aussi l'information concernant les mots de la maladie ça là, en cette ci Assez présentement. Le gouvernement de cette a continué pour encourager cette lycée pour prendre la vaccine contre le corona et poursuivre tout le protocole et le règle qui est en place pour continuer à réduire et empêcher les maladies de se manger. Le gouvernement de cette a fait comprendre que vous êtes concerné pour ce secteur pays qui a trouvé affecté au résultat du corona et qui ont mis espoir que ces décisions qui ont implémenté à présent qui a assisté le secteur de la transportation. Secteur de magie et boisson, secteur pour ces diverses agences qui ont une activité et ces industries qui ont la direction de À présent, le confiure a commencé à 11h pour 4h bon matin. Les, organisa les organisations religieuses ont une spéciale activité et services comme mariage, baptême et l'étement, mais pas plus que 100 personnes ont assisté. C'est au moment à l'école pour célébrer les étudiants qui finissent les études. Ça nous fait graduation. Yo, ça fait ça, mais ça, ça dépend de ce qu'on établissement et depuis, et depuis, yo, qu'à suivre toute l'autre web qui est en place pour gouverner la protection de la corona. Pour l'activité sociale, yo, qu'à permettre à un hôtel de 150 monde, mais yo, tout n'est pour déjà fini pour une dose de la vaccine, yo, et aussi après, yo, trouver autorisation des ministères de santé et chef de police, cette fois-ci. L'auto passager, Sacha est à présent trois passagers par an. Il y a une personne qui a une licence pour vendre des boissons et des alcools, qui a trouvé permission pour payer depuis 8 heures bon matin pour juste 10 heures au soir, chaque jour. Les citoyens qui ont retourné cette liste et aussi les étrangers qui ont une test PCR qui est négative et qui ont pris toute dose de la vaccine, 
pakai ni pu quarantine department sate kai khotune pu test mun ki ka atwe pas de vers pour cette ici mais chef officier médical la ni pou voir pou placer n'importe étranger ki ka visiter a quarantine pou protéger santé publique pays gouvernement cette ici très plein pou aussi annoncer ki service bateau sorti martinique pou cette ici kai khotune commencé le 1er juillet 2021 Yo ka continue pour conseiller public cette ici qui toutes ces précautions de santé a continuer comme la coutume pour servir masse à soufflage distance sociale la ville armée sanitize etc. Ko gouvernement ka continue pour renforcer système santé public pays yo ka encore encourager tout monde public pour point responsabilité et commander yo pour tout coopérer puis les autorités en implémentation ti wèg neuf ça là Le gouvernement a aussi fait appel pour le public là pour prendre avantage de la vaccine là pour protéger eux-mêmes, la famille et la société là, généralement. Le chef des affaires économiques et recherches du département finance cette ci ça c'est Jean-Aïe Léons, déclaré que les dépenses cette ci ont proche pour adresser la santé très haut tout le monde. Selon M. Léons, Chaque dollar qui on peut au centre dépenser à l'argent proche pour santé yo c'est l'argent qui te ça dépenser pour improver la vie économique et activité yo éducation aussi et l'autre des de, um, dépenses qui nécessaire dépenses pour santé ni capacité à pour fond n'importe monde qui pas ni assurance de santé il déclare que c'est seulement 18% monde qui ca travail qui ni assurance de santé à cette ci système assurance pour santé pays qui gouvernement ca travail ouais ça soupe pour qu'il implémente un service qui est très nécessaire et bien facile côté tout le monde qui a trouvé ce service. Léon dit qu'il y a un système d'assurance nationale qui a essayé pour accomplir ce pour tenir un compte et puis une compagnie d'assurance privée à payer pour qu'il y ait développé un programme de service d'assurance qui n'est pas tout le monde qui a payé à sa service. Léon déclare qu'il y a une autre démarche qui a appris c'est pour essayer changer disposition publique la ley vini pour assistance assurance pour santé et faire comprendre ek bay assurance la ki a pil an se dépense la ki a sou do yon pèsoun ka y disparèt parce que système assurance nationale sa la ka y pren responsabilité a pou chebe ebe pote go chay dépense sa la ki ek gouvernement aussi ka y pren responsabilité pou moun ki pa kapab pou paye pou assistance dépense santé assurance Chef officier à département a fait assistant chef officier à département électoral cette ci elle me fait l'annel adresser situation moun ki peni difficulté et puis certificat mariage les yo ka vini pour enregistrer pour carte identification yo madame l'annel ka fait yo savent que la nécessité assistance ki yo sa trouvé à département même les vini pour problème et puis non ki ka paraître à sous certificat mariage mais bien souvent il ka nécessaire pour régler ça en au greffe même Mais les officiers électoraux qui ont tiré ces assistances là pour faciliter ces transactions ça là. Yo ni pour présenter document ça côté électoral avec ID card là que nous ca fait changement mais nous pas ca accepter là en bureau électoral tout ces monde ça nous ca bailler en forme pour aller au grand FIP avec quantité à pour payer pour changer nom c'est 30 dollars. La voix assistant chef département électoral à cette ci madame Elle est fière en elle qu'a adressé la situation pour mon qui n'est problème avec certificat mariage à faire comme ça pour enregistrer. Et ce qu'on s'en doit trouver pour nouvelle année, madame. Moi, quand Monsieur Autain, pour qu'à garder mon cabaret invitation, pour jouer puis moi considérer qu'on se fait la vie, on a eu pour cette autre nouvelle à Creole. Après ça, je vous souhaite une bonne fin de semaine et pour vieux pour cette autre Chanel. Monsieur Pel Primus. That brings us to the end of NTN Nightly. Join us next time at 7 p.m. with a repeat at 7 a.m. You can also catch up with us anytime on the St. Lucia Government Facebook page or YouTube channel. I am Janelle Norville.